Today, we're going to look at the church. I have been in many churches. I know many Christians. What I'm going to say is, okay, I do have a few people in mind. Not everywhere. Don't think, oh, you know, he went to this church, so he must be talking about that church. Don't you even start thinking about that. Well, he knows this person. He might be, no, don't you even start thinking about that. Now, there are Christians that profess to be saved, or let me say, other people say they're saved. I haven't heard it out of their lips. And their life and their conduct makes me say, that's not Christ-like. And in my prayers, I will say, God, I don't know about them. You know, they know, and Satan knows. But as far as what I know, which is little, I'm going to pray, Lord, you know, that you bless, or, or if they're not saved, I'm going to pray they will get saved. There are churches where I look at the things, I say, you know what? They say it's Christian, but it's not. It's anything but Christian. The Bible, the music. They're going on. Do I have anybody in mind? I would lie if I said I did not. But I ain't going to tell you. And if you say, Stolly said this church, Stolly said this person, this pastor, this member, you're absolutely lying. Because I am going to call no names. Because I... I'm not going to say no name. And we're going to look at is Judas Iscariot, the traitor of Jesus. And we're going to look at the very fact is the Judas spirit, the Judas character might be your, your pastor. It might be your preacher. Might be the Sunday school teacher, it might be a missionary, it might be evangelist, it might be somebody in your church holding an office, or it may be somebody just in your church that sits in a pew. I think you would, you, that the, even the Baptist preachers would say that in some churches, not all, there's a Judas. And I'm not talking about just the man that sold out. I've been saved since 1987, figure it out. I have known Christians to sell out other Christians, a Judas. And their price has been far less and far more for 30 pieces of silver. I have been sold out by Christians or people who profess to be Christians. I'm not talking about the profession of the selling out the 30 pieces of silver, though Judas did. What I'm talking about is Judas became or the devil entered into Judas. Satan used Judas. Satan became, I mean, Judas became a tool of Satan. And there are people who are saved or unsaved. They will go into a church, saved or unsaved, they will become a member of that church. And years and years and months or days, whatever. At one point in time, Satan will enter into that person, and Satan will begin to use that person. And there are times in the church where a person, unsaved, will enter into a church, will found a church, will start a church, whatever with the church, and he is already a tool of Satan. 
This is what I'm talking about when we study the scriptures in Jesus and Paul's day. Uh, wolves in sheep clothing. I've heard many Christians, many, we got a great pastor, we got a great church. I said to one of them, what about Jesus? Oh yeah, him too. I hear these people lift their, their pastor up on high and say, Stolly, you're jealous, no I'm not. But they don't lift Jesus up on high. And only a few pastors I've known have ever said, hey, no, stop. I'm not the figurehead here. Jesus is. Only a few has ever stopped that. The other one, <laughs> And I'm looking at a ministry of Satan in the church, and people don't even know because they don't study their Bible. Now let's look at Judas. And before you go to your church and you start pointing fingers and you start saying he or her and all that, you better do much prayer. You better be on your knees in prayer and you better be in all 66 books of the King James Bible, reading and studying. Stiley, have you ever walked up to somebody and professed they to be of Satan? Absolutely not. What do you do? I turn it to the Lord in prayer. Do you believe somebody or are, are, they are the works of Satan in churches you've been in? Absolutely. There are some men I've been in their churches. They're not in my prayer list at all. And but maybe time to time I will. Their name comes into my, and I'll lift it up. But I don't pray for them. God told Jeremiah they got so bad, don't even pray for them. I figure, listen, I pray. For I've got a book here. People's names. I mean, this, this is not a prayer book. Our Father, our Heaven, how the priest, what the Holy Oh, these are people, three columns of people's names I pray for. And certain events, but, you know. And every day I take one page and I go through the names and I pray. There are people whose names are not in this book. Am I going to broadcast it? No. So, Luke 6, verse 13. And when it was day, he called unto his disciples, and of them he chose twelve, whom also he named apostles, Simon, whom he also named Peter, Andrew his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Simon called the oldest, Judas the brother of James, there was two Judases, and Judas Iscariot, which was the traitor. Now, number one. Number one thing could be Judas in your church. He could be a member with his names on the roll of that church. The pastor, the secretary, or whoever does it, they have a book somewhere. And they write that person's name that I want to be a member of this church. Maybe a name in that church role, the church membership. It could be a Judas. Judas is mentioned in the names of the apostles. You may have somewhere a name of preachers and evangelists and, and teachers and scholars and professors. And in that name, there could be a Judas. 
You may have a college, seminary, university, school, private, or and a list of the facility, the people, and in that list there could be a Judas. In the list of the twelve disciples, the apostles of Jesus is Judas, which was also the traitor. Now that was written after the fact. They did not know that Judas was the traitor, we'll look at that in a moment, to after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Actually, the garden. So you may have somebody who's in your church, in your school, and their name may be in the books, and they may be the devil, Satan or the traitor. Now we know Judas went to hell. I'm going to say everybody who, who, who's a traitor or a, they could be saved. They're going to they're go to heaven when they die. They're just going to lose rewards. And if they're lost, they're going to go to hell. In the church, you can have saved traitors. Demas turned his back on Paul and went back to Thessalonica. He didn't go to hell. Matthew 10. Matthew 10. Verse 4. Now, if you look at Matthew 10, I wanted to do Luke, but Matthew 10, 1 through 4 is that same list. It's the, the membership roles of the disciples, the apostles of Jesus Christ, as a church world. I want you to look at verse number four. Judas Iscariot, which betrayed him, like Luke said. And these, excuse me, these twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded to say, Go not ye away the Gentiles, into the city of Samaritans, enter not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You see Judas here? Who betrayed them? The membership role of the disciples and the apostles. And the Bible said, go preach. Well, you know, this message, it, it, it can't be my preacher. You can't be talking, not a preacher, Stiley. No. Judas preached. Judas was ordained. There are preachers out there. There in the world, they are a preacher in a church, they are a preacher evangelist, they are a, a preacher in missionary, they are a preacher on the radio, they are a preacher on television, they are a well-known preacher, they are an unknown preacher. They're ordained. They may have a doctorate, <clears throat> doctor or PhD. And they are a Judas. They're not right. Don't you think that because he's a preacher, because he's a pastor, you've got to be going to heaven. There'll be more preachers and pastors in hell, they say. Their feet will be sticking out the window. And number one is, should I join this church? You got to look at that pastor. You got to look at that preacher. The head of that, that church assembly. You got to look at his life and you got to realize, is he a sheep? Or is he a wolf in sheep's clothing? 
And it'll be hard to tell. It's going to take years. But it will be manifested. And the problem is, for the sheep, they've been so many years under that preacher, under that pastor, that when it does hit the revelation of that man being a Judas, being of Satan, the people have been so fooled and so deceived, they don't want to hear it. I know that for a fact. I know a woman went to the church. Oh no no no! You're you're talking wrong about him. You're totally oh no not him. Years and years later, his life became a revelation to everybody. The church split. That woman came up to me. She said, "You, you told me so, right?" That man and his family is in my book to pray for. The pastor or preacher of that church. Yeah, he's followed up. He's in here to pray for. You say, well, there's somebody in here that you don't have. To. Yeah, I, 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 mean, I, I think that guy is real wicked. But I think that uh, there's, there's churches and pastors and people... Uh, I don't think they're right. I don't think they're living right. I don't live right. I, I'm not perfect. I think that God, if I pray for them, I think God can change their hearts and change their way. Called repentance. But Judas was on the church rolls, if I can say that. Judas was ordained by Jesus. And Judas preached. Sent out by Jesus. Look at verse 8. Healed the sick, cleansed the lepers, raised the dead, cast out devils. Now, we don't heal the sick today. We don't take care of the lepers. That is God in the medical field. We don't resurrect anybody from the dead. But there, are, there were and there are in the church today offices and ministries. There is a nursing home ministry. There is door-to-door -door knocking. There is drive a van. There is the prison ministry. I've been involved in, except for the van, all of them. There is the prayer night. There are churches that have VBS. I'm involved in that. There are people who, who will have take care of all the food for a fellowship. I right? don't have to be healed of sick, raised a leper, raising the dead, and all. It don't have to be that spectacular. But there are offices and there are positions in today's local church. That we can use for Matthew 10 a And you may have Judas in that office. You may have a Judas going to the nursing home, going to the prison, passing out gospel tracts. Driving or, or being a monitor on a bus. You say, really? You, you can have a devil, a Judas, go out and, and, and try to get people saved? There he is right there. He is in the roles of, of Jesus' assembly. He is called to preach. He is ordained. And he's worked in the ministry. I think he was perfectly well. I, like the Bible says, the devil will enter him later. But I'm telling you today, in the church, there are men and women who go into a church and they're lost. 
There are men and women who go in the church, they get saved, they aren't saved, and then the devil gets to them later on. I had, when I was first saved, I was in the church. And what was happening was, this insurance company had a great idea, and I was told, I'm not sure, but the president or the founder of this company was saved or a church member. And what he was, he taught them or had classes for them to understand the Christian talk, the Christian ways. So he taught them, if you look and act like a Christian, a wolf, and go into a church and befriend and Judas themselves, your 30 pieces of silver will be, they will buy insurance from you. And then when you've got most of the people in here, and there's no one else in that church to buy your insurance, you pick up and go, you hang yourself and go somewhere else. May I say to pastor that church, booted them out. Amen. So, John chapter 6. <clears throat> you can't be fooled. This is the, you, not everybody in the church is saved. If the rapture were to happen in a church service time, there may be some that are still sitting in that pew when the, when the trump blows. You know what would be the absolute worst thing that would ever happen? The rapture happens while you're in church. And people are raptured out of that church and the pastor stays. What do we think of that? The rapture happens and the people that sat next to you in the pew stay. It would be hard for you to think to realize that the great white throne judgment they will be pastors and preachers that will hear Jesus say, Depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew you. John 6 70. I've talked to Christians, and they, well, he's, you know, just because he's a pastor, he's saved. Being a pastor does not call your salvation. Paul did not tell the, the, the Philippian. Prisoner, go to school, get ordained, and go into a pastorate, and thou shalt be saved in your house. He didn't say that. John 6, 17, Jesus answered, said, Have I not chosen you twelve? Chosen. And one of you is the devil. And he spank of Judas Iscariot. The son of Simon for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. He's in the membership list. Remember? He is of the devil. He is chosen by Jesus. In other words, he is sent by God. God will send a, a deception, a preacher, a song leader, a secretary, a, a, a Sunday school teacher, he will send people into a church to deceive the church, because that's what they want. It is God who sent that lying spirit to the king, because that's what he wanted. The horrible things to realize what you want after you have rejected the truth, God will give you. If you do not want a Peter, 
Jane, John, Paul, the rest of the disciples' names, I, I can't name them. If you don't want them, God will send you a Judas. I said, God will send you a Judas. Because you didn't want Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, and, or Paul, or Barnabas, and Silas. You rejected them. And then there's nothing else for, but for God to send you a Judas. And there are plenty of Judases out there. How can this be? How can, how can you deceive those people? Jesus did, because that's what the people wanted. I, I was in a church. That's exactly what they want. They want... Uh, I tried to help them out. I tried to grow them. They don't want it. And they're today they're just doing whatever they want to do. I'm praying for a few that will come out. You say the whole church, you say the pastor, and, and I pray, but seriously, I don't believe it. Oh, lack of faith. Yeah, because you know what? That 30 pieces of silver was great to Judas. The only time that, that 30 pieces of silver for Judas did not become great is when he realized what he had done. And to realize a person in a church, whatever position they are in that church, the only time they're going to realize what that 30 pieces of silver did will be at the great white throne judgment or the judgment seat of Christ. You can live your whole entire life alive. And I think, and I know before God sends a Judas, he'll send a Peter, James, and John, and Paul, and Silas, and Priscilla, and Aquila. And when you reject them, Then Judas comes. Chapter 13, verse 2. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Judas will be present at your fellowship. Judas will have your macaroni salad. He will have your salad. He will have some of your fried chicken. And he may bring a cake. He may bring a pasta meal. He may go to your... Men's prayer meeting. He may go to your movie night. Whatever extra activities outside the services of the church. For a fellowship to get the people of the church together. And talk and mingle. Judas may be there. I mean, he may be in the pulpit. May be in the pulpit. He may be door knocking. He may be passing out gospel tracts. He may be at the prison ministry. He may be at the, the nursing home. He may open his house for missionary as a place to stay while they're there. He also may be at your fellowship. 
at your meal. This is the Passover, the last meal, the last supper, the last supper Jesus eats at all before his death, burial, and resurrection. He is with his disciples. And there is Judas. Now don't go be point. Oh, I know a guy, he's at every fellowship, he's in every ministry. He may be just a faithful man serving the Lord. Don't go start pointing fingers. You think somebody, you take it in prayer. And when you pray, say, God, I could be wrong. Help me. If I am wrong, I need to shut up. If I'm right, you got to handle it, not me. And if I'm right and you want me to handle it, I better, the Bible says I better have two or three. And we better agree on it. But it's going to take much prayer and much time. This is something that's not done overnight. And if it is the church, if it is the pastor, you may have to pick up your spiritual bags and go somewhere else. I have. I left the church for one sole reason. I was going there. I was looking for a King, this was a non-King James Bible-believing church. When I found a King James Bible-believing church, I said, goodbye, we're gone. I believe those modern Bibles of this. Now, let me show you how, when I left that church, I said, because it was anything but the King James. People say, oh, the King James, I looked at their Bible, it was a foreign Bible, it was a, was the Alexandrian Bible. But they're King James. So I sent everybody in that church gospel tracts comparing the King James Bible with the Alexandrian Code of Westcott and Horn and Codex Syndicatus and Codex uh, Vaticanus. You know, all the perverted modern versions. And a man of authority in that church said that was garbage. He said, what do you say, Stiley? Oh, Lord God, is that man Judas? I know Peter wouldn't say that the King James Bible is garbage. I know Paul wouldn't say, hey, they're trying to help those Christians grow. That's garbage. I don't think John would say, John said, listen, if anybody does not bring this doctrine, anybody does not lift up and exalt Jesus Christ as God, don't you say good day, good afternoon. Jehovah Witnesses come to my house. Uh, when they start leaving, I say, go to hell you don't believe in. Judas was at fellowship. He's in the ministries. He's on the church road. He may be in the pulpit. He may be teaching your children Sunday school. She may be working with the children in the nursery. You can have a female Judas. Thirteen twenty nine. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag. Judas was the treasurer. I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm not going to tell you who it is. Other people said he is saved, but not, I never heard him say it. I know, I know a church treasurer. And his email, and he joked about, was he called himself Judas number two. Judas two.
And there were times I was with him and other members of the church. And he would say something like, well, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call names out. They're not real names. Bill must have got a raise because now he gives X more amount for his tithing. Jane, <coughs> these are not real names. Jane, well, I don't know how she can survive on what she gets. He would sit there in, in, in uh, with a congregation of people and tell how much people would give. And he would call himself Judas too. Now, other people said he was saved, but I never heard him say and he thought it was a joke. Well, we didn't keep on being friends when I told him personally, privately. That's no joke. Oh, you know, we broke fellowship. You know how one thing to know if you are dealing with a Judas? If he nicknames himself Judas. All right, back to the lesson. Judas held the bag, he was the treasurer. Judas not only may be the pastor, he could be the song leader, he could be the piano player, he could be, or she could be, the church secretary, the treasurer, the one that mows the lawn. That goes with the Judas that could be Sunday school teacher, the bus rider, the nursing home, the jailhouse ministry. Do you realize that what we see from the beginning, we saw Judas on the scroll of the church. Judas, and it could be plural, and it could be a female, Judas can be anywhere in your church. Even multiple places. And you go to a church fellowship. And Judas may be sitting there at a table. With a plate of pudding. Or chips. Or watermelon. Judas may get up and do a special. Judas may be at the prayer meeting. I heard, I heard a pastor tell me this, and I don't know personally, but let me realize, I'm just, I heard a pastor say that there are people who go to prayer meetings. I can't, I, to say it, I can't believe it, I, I, I think it's rude, and I think it's cruel. There are people that go to prayer meetings that will write down people's prayer, then gossip about it. They're not there to pray for the people. They're there to get the news. That's disgusting. But that's a Judas. A Judas will go to the prayer meeting to get the juicy tidbits. And tell others. That's a Judas. A Judas will say, Say this prayer without salvation so you're damned and go to hell. Judas will lead you away from God in Jesus Christ. Judas will, weigh, will lead you from the King James Bible to any other modern Bible. That's a Judas. Judas 18, I'm Judas. John 18. John 18, 3. Judas then had received a band of men and officers and the chief priests and the Pharisees. Judas will have his own followers. Judas may get a band of men from officers inside the church. Judas may cause, and I've seen this, or heard it, a church split. 
Judas will gather a group of people out of that church. And they will challenge and argue and fight against the pastor. I heard another pastor one time, very reliable, that the church, I'm going to say half the church, but I, that one part of the church took the other part of the church to court, to sue them. Whoever laid and started that fight was a Judas. Judas will leave a church and start his church across the street or next door to the church he just left. Now I have thought, I'm being honest, I have thought to start a church right next door to this one church only to be King James and because that church is completely not King James. But friend, that would be a move of Judas. Paul said, I believe it's the book of Acts, and somewhere Paul said, I am not going to build on any other one's foundation. Actually, I don't think it wasn't Acts. Paul said that if a man is building a, a work and has a ministry, this is why afterwards I learned that we're at a place here at Daytona Beach, and we were not attending this church. But we knew the people. And they had established their ground there as a public ministry. And we happened, we didn't know anything about it, and we have to show up when we're there for a while. And finally, you know what? I, I read that verse and I studied that verse out, and it's like we went up to him and said, Listen, we're leaving. I said, This is your church. It's been here. This is your church foundation. We're gonna go somewhere else. Not that we hate you, not that we're fighting against. This is this is your ground. And they say, oh no, 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 stay in this and that. No. End up later on, we end up going to that church. And we were back there doing what we were doing. But Judas, some Judases. Now listen, if if a group of, of, of people in the church find error and fault with the pastor, the teaching, and there's deception, and they biblically deal with the pastor or the people one-on-one, -on -one, as Matthew said. And when they don't listen, they gather a few others and they go meet. And if it doesn't listen, then they take it to the entire church and then when all is not revealed, not and all done right, and there's been no biblical change, then you just pick yourself up, quietly go and do something else. When I mean do something, go to another church or start your own church. You don't get a band of officers and a band of men to fight. You get a band of men, a band of officers, and say, listen, and you sit down and you say, listen, we have a problem. We have an issue. And you would hear the people, and maybe you're wrong. Two sides to every story. But fighting is a Judas way. Paul said in, in the Corinthian church, it's rather, you know what? Just take the loss. Move on. And if you do right, God will do right with you. Acts 1. Twenty-five. Now, this is not all Judas, but this Judas, he may take part in the ministry of apostleship from which Judas transgressed and fell, that he might go to his own place. This Judas, 
and many Judases we're talking about that you may know or heard of or known of, they're going to die and go to hell. Now there are Judases that are saved and will go to heaven. And they'll lose rewards. They'll get at you. This Judas will go to hell and lose it all. This Judas will be in hell with the people he deceived. There's nothing worse for a, a deceiving preacher. Yes, I have one in mind. That deceives the people when getting saved. They're not saved. Saved is prayer. And you end up in hell with them. Matthew 26. Matthew 26, 21. As they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, One of you shall betray me. And they were seemingly sorrowful, began every one of them to say, Lord, is it I? The answer is, He that dippeth his hand in with me in a ditch, the same shall betray me. Verse 25, Then Judas, which betrayed him, and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. No one of the disciples and apostles knew who Judas was, what he was. They knew he was a treasurer, they knew he was a thief, but they did not know he was a betrayer. They did not know he was of Satan. Can you imagine if Peter ever found out? Peter would have decked him. If Peter took a sword and cut off a man's ear in defense of Jesus, what do you think he would have done to Judas? They did not know who Judas was until the garden when he showed up what we just read earlier. You may never know don't you think, oh, I know who he is. You may never know who your Judas is in your church. If you have one. Probably do. But you probably will never know who Judas is. Except at the great white throne judgment. Or the judgment seat of Christ. You may never know. They are at the last supper. Jesus says, one of you is going to betray me. And nobody had any idea who it was. All eyes did not turn on Judas. And Jesus said, or the Bible, Holy Spirit said, Judas said, is it I? And Jesus said, thou hast said. And they still did not know. I've been in churches where that pastor's got up at that podium and he's live and uh, 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 and the people sit there, oh he's just so great, this is so wonderful, we got a great church. I'm like, ah Lord, open their eyes that they may see. It's gonna get frustrating. Because you may see it, they may not. In most cases, they don't want to see it. Because they love it. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 11. 14. No marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. I've seen the light. There's a big light and all that. You better get out of that light. It may be Satan. Or a choo-choo train to run you over. Now watch. 15. Therefore, it is no great thing if his. Now who's the his? Yeah, his? Who is that? 
Who is he talking about in verse 14? Satan. So, therefore, is no great thing if Satan's ministers, Satan's ministers? Satan has ministers? Oh, yeah, they're Judas. Also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Whose end shall be according to your work. Church A has a godly praying preacher, pastor. Church B has, well, an average Bible preacher, pastor. Church C has a satanic, Satan minister. He's of Satan. And he looks like and he acts like the pastor preacher of Church B and Church A. He does not have to advertise, I'm the Church of Satan, like Anton LaVey. He does not need to do that. Satan and his ministers have Baptist churches. They're not all Catholic. Look at verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. I'll tell you right now, number one rule to find out if, if Satan's involved, if somebody says today they're apostolic, they're, you'll find them on Facebook. I'm apostle, so, so, so. That right there, number one, because we, there are no apostles today. But you see that deceitful workers? That's your prison ministry, that's your jail ministry, that's your bus ministry, that's your fellowship, that's, you know, they're, they're in the music, they're in the choir, they're... They're of Satan. For every godly thing, there's a satanic thing. For every right, of God, there's a wrong of Satan. For every holy thing of God, the devil has an unholy. So if God has pastors and preachers, Satan has pastors and preachers. God has a Peter, James, and John, and Paul, and Silas, and Bartholomew, and Philip, Satan has a Judas. Twelve apostles of Jesus' ministry that we read in Luke chapter 6. Out of twelve, one was Satan. One was of the devil. And he did everything that the other apostles and disciples did. That when it came to that Jesus said, one of you, they had no idea. Now, somebody's going to listen to this message. Oh, yeah, I know that guy. Yeah, Fred. That guy's wicked. He's terrible. Ah, it's got to be him. No. No, it does not have to be him. Fred just may be battling the flesh. Every Christian battles with the flesh. Fred just may be doing it openly. But it may not be Fred. Oh, look at Sally over there. She's quiet, stays herself, doesn't. No, it may not be Sally. Sally just may be a shy, sweet, God loving woman. Like Mary. This video. This message is not for you to say, Aha! It's you! No. It's to have you realize, <coughs> excuse me, it's to have you realize in your church there may be a Judas. And what I'm saying is, if that Judas by prayer, by Bible reading. One more place, Second Timothy. 
more points. Second Timothy 2 15. We done. If the pastor of the church you're at is Judas, my advice to you is go find a church that doesn't have Judas. Now, if Judas makes the pancakes for the pancake breakfast at the men's prayer meeting, you can live with that Judas. The other 11 apostles did. If Judas drives the bus and he's not interfering with the activities of the church, the 11 disciples go out with their Judas. Now, if your Judas is openly deceptive, openly causing troubles and problems, and if he's not the pastor, you need to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word. You need to, to study the scriptures out you need to pray it out. Then Matthew tells us that Jesus tells us, you're to go to that person and deal with that person. Matthew 18. More, if thy brother has trespassed against thee, you have somebody causing trouble. Go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. I was in a church and the pastor goes, well, you know, this family don't, that family don't like about you. That, this person don't like about you. I said, Pastor Matthew 18. Well, what's that mean? You're to tell those people to come talk to me. Well, they don't want to talk to you. Tough! You're violating the scriptures. I've dealt with many Christians. I've gone up to them privately, off to alone, no one else knew, with an open Bible, and showed them their error. Never have I gone to step 17. All right, so, alone, if he hear thee, thou hast gained a brother. Maybe you're wrong. Maybe he didn't know. Maybe he was going off on a path that would have been to destruction and you helped him. Okay? But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word shall be established. All right, he won't listen to you. <clears throat> Doesn't say get the pastors to get two or three. And you go deal with them. And if he still won't listen, if he neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. Then you go to the pastor. And if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man in public. Maybe the pastor didn't know. Maybe it would be a help to the pastor. Say, Pastor, I went and talked to this man. He wouldn't listen. Pastor, Tom and Philip and I, we talked to this man. We think, we discussed, we prayed over it. This is a serious business that you just can't say, you, 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 you. Because there's an issue in America that if you falsely accuse or you accuse without proof and evidence, you can be in big trouble. What would you do, Styling? Uh, you've been in, yes, I have. Especially with pastors. Walk 
away. Don't tell anybody else. You say, well, and you run into people say, oh, we miss you. What happened to you? Eh, we found this church. You don't need to say, well, you know, your pastor is the devil and all that. No, you don't need to do that. You say, what about that church you sent all the, because they were in great error of the Bible. And they knew where I stood, and the pastor knew where I stood. 